Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm gonna be sharing with you a weekly meal prep. This is all the foods, all the meals that I have been cooking up for my five kids over the past week or so, more like two weeks here. We've got a bit of traveling that we're gonna be doing, so I'm gonna share with you the meals that we make while we travel out of town. And we're gonna start this off with some breakfast prep. I have a fresh loaf of bread back there and we have sliced it up and we are making French toast. So I do four eggs to a cup of water and then about a teaspoon of cinnamon to that and about half a teaspoon of salt to my French toast egg mixture. And then we just dip our bread in that and cook it on a hot griddle. Here I'm having a little bit of trouble because my griddle wasn't preheated well enough and my French toast stuck just a tad. Monica, they didn't stick this time because the griddle was hot enough. We're gonna serve this up with some butter and some maple syrup. We also have elderberry jelly, elderberry syrup that we like to use on our French toast sometimes as well. I just use my stick of butter to butter up my hot griddle and this is the last two pieces of French toast I'm gonna do because I am running out of my French toast batter, or what do we call this? The egg wash for the bread. I'm running low on that. So we're just gonna cook these last two up. And the kids have all eaten, so these are gonna be my pieces of French toast. All right, we're gonna throw some chicken broth together. So I've got some freeze-dried celery, because I don't have any celery at the moment, and I've got some freeze-dried onions, because I'm saving my fresh onions to make soup. And we're gonna dump a bunch of stuff in there with some bay leaf, some peppercorns, some chopped up carrots, and I'm going to look in my freezer and see what else we have to dump in the soup or into the um, chicken bone broth. If I have any other bones or anything else in the freezer I can add to it, I will do that at this time. Okay, so far today, Hagen and I have made some brownies. We made other meals too. We had breakfast and lunch and all of that, but as far as like meals made from scratch, she's making a loaf of bread, and then right here I've got our soup going. And we're going to throw all this together before we go on our bike ride. So we're trying to do this real quick before Aaron pulls in the driveway. I'm adding some star anise to my soup. And let me show you what else I have in here. Okay, we've got black peppercorns, bay leaf, uh, freeze-dried celery, freeze-dried onion, a whole bunch of carrots. We've got some beef, some tough beef bits from a beef pot roast that I did that I didn't do long enough or parts that we didn't want to eat. And then I have a whole bunch of chicken carcass in there. And we are going to pressure cook this while we are out on our ride. And um, I might either continue to slow cook it overnight, so I might just let it slow cook all night long. This is my strained bone broth, and we are gonna pour this into a jar I'll use it for either soups or for making gravies or for cooking rice. And that is how we like to use our bone broth. All right, we are making the brownie recipe from Belly Full, and we've got all of our ingredients here. And we're going to add those into our wet ingredients. Let me see. I'm going to put on this here. Mm -hmm. We're eating good tonight. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that looks good. This is called folding, so now we're folding the chocolate chips into the brownie mix. We're making sure our brownie mix is all mixed up. We're gonna split this in half. And probably put maybe less than half in both of these because these are kind of small pans. They're not your typical 9 by 13. So we'll see about how much this does. Both of those will start out with that. all the way through. All right, 
these are the brownies that Hagen and the other kids made together. So it's going to be our Friday bake off and I will leave the link to the recipe down below in this video's description. All right, today's lunch, we're just having some baguettes with some pepperonis and some mozzarella cheese. I'm thinking, I don't know if we're gonna do any sauce yet or not, but we also have some grapes at the table. Just a quick and easy way, bake at 400 degrees for 10 minutes. Um, I stuffed them with, I should have said that first, garlic, butter, cheese, and uh, pepperonis and salami. You can get as fancy as you want to. We didn't, we just sprinkled some garlic stuff on top and baked them up and that's what the kids are going to have with some grapes whoa all right we're having sloppy joes with some fruit but we're also going to have some veggies Where's Riker? Sorry. Riker. Riker. sloppy joes During this portion of the video, we are staying at an Airbnb on the Newport coast, and I am going to make up a big batch of breakfast burritos. So we're starting out here with some frozen potatoes I got from the grocery store. They were already cubed up for hash browns, and I am seasoning them with some real salt and some real salt seasoned salt, which is my favorite seasoning. You can check it out linked down below in this video's description where you're going to get the best deal on re real salt on the internet. I made a huge batch of these burritos and that way we had breakfast already prepared for the following morning, which was race day morning. So all I needed to do was heat up these burritos for my family and we would have something to eat. All right, tonight our amazing easy meal out of town is gonna be a Caesar salad with some tortellini and some sauce. Okay, do you want a little bit of pasta? Cheese pasta? Yeah. That sounds really good. Where'd you go? That sounds really good. <laughs> You're so cute. Here we go. Lock the van. Whoa! This Can you carry is... that? Don't drop it. All right, we had a full day of racing, eating food. I didn't share everything that we got, but we had leftover. Um, we had breakfast burritos. We had turkey sandwiches that I packed. And now we're going to go into Moe's. Famous Moe's for their clam chowder. It's delicious, it's amazing. We come here every time we come to Newport. It's amazing. So we're gonna go in here and eat some Sunday dinner. All right, I got oyster shooters. They're amazing and uh, what is it called? Clam chowder. And then all the kids got fish and chips. Aaron got fish and chips. We also had calamari that's gone and then he had a really good prawn salad. We're sitting here parked and then somebody backed into our bike rack and you can see the bottom bar is bent. We were able to get it repaired quickly. We have been busy, busy today. Five kids, always busy. Head spinning around constantly. So we had an orthodontist appointment this morning and now we're back home. I'm hungry. I haven't had breakfast or anything because 
homeschool kids, forgot about the appointment, made it to the appointment, and now we're back again. So, I'm starving. I want spaghetti and meat sauce, so that's what we're having for lunch. I know it's typically a dinner item, but we're just gonna go ahead. We have mountain bike practice tonight. Aaron's out of town for the whole day. Uh, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and make dinner now for lunch. And then that way later we can just have easy peasy sandwiches. I need to make a loaf of bread. We're down to, I mean, when I make a loaf of bread, we feed a meal and this is all that's left. So I need to make another loaf of bread for this evening and tomorrow. That way we can just have easy sandwiches or something after mountain bike practice. But I've got two pounds of ground beef right here. I'm only gonna use about a pound of it to make my spaghetti meat sauce. I'm just using a jar of organic Costco sauce that's gonna go on top of this meat. I season the meat with granulated onion, granulated garlic, you know, the, se the dry seasoning because I'm not cutting up anything. Uh, and then we're just gonna use some of our Azure Standard spaghetti noodles that you can buy in bulk through Azure Standard. It's awesome, get a big old bag of spaghetti noodles and we're gonna cook those up and then we're gonna have spaghetti for lunch. It's gonna be delicious. I'll show you the finished product in just a moment. Okay, I divvied up the meat and it just made sense to go ahead, if I'm gonna brown up some burger, to brown up burger for another meal. Now we can have that as, if I decide to turn it into taco meat, which I probably should have added some seasoning and made it taco meat, but uh, we'll figure out what to use it for in the next day or so. Next up, we're gonna come over here to this pot, this water's almost boiling. I got some, you can see the minerals from the Redmond's Real Salt down in there. If the water looks dirty, it's just because I stirred it with my meat spatula, just to stir in the salt. There we go. Put this lid back on, bring it back up to a boil and let it simmer for 10 minutes. All right, this morning we are going to be making some banana bread in our Zoju Rishi bread machine. Now, this is the Zoju Rishi. Uh, set up with the paddles and I'll show you the bread machine in just a little bit. It's my favorite bread machine and I've tried quite a few because I purchased my bread machines from the thrift store and the benefit of that is is you can buy a bread machine for about let's see 10 to 25 dollars. Uh, Zojirishi's run for a couple hundred dollars and uh if you buy them brand new. And I have found Zoju Rishi's at the thrift stores for $20 in like new condition. And then all I had to do was replace uh, the bowl. The inner bowl is about $75 for this. And uh, the ones that they came with were fine, but they were starting to get scratched up on the inside. So just because of the type of material it's made out of, I didn't want those scratches getting in my food. So I bought a new pan for my Zoju Rishi bread machine. And that's what we're we are using today and we are going to make the banana bread recipe out of this book bread machine baking perfect every time by laura brody and millie actor so it has recipes for multiple types of bread machines so depending on what type of bread machine you have it has a recipe in there for you. So we're doing the banana oatmeal bread today and I've already started out in our vessel here with one quarter cup of water. The next thing we're gonna do is add an egg. And it's the one thing I didn't have out and ready from my fridge to go in here. So we're doing one large fresh chicken egg. Get that shell out of there, we don't want that. I've got my girls right here with me, Hagen and Annika, 
they're giving me a hand this morning or observing, learning how to bake in this bread machine. We need two tablespoons of vegetable oil. So here we have our tablespoon. I'm using liquid coconut oil, one, two. So I'm using an organic, pure liquid coconut oil for my oil. We're gonna do three tablespoons of brown sugar. One and a half teaspoons of salt. Four tablespoons of powdered buttermilk. And you always add your ingredients in the order that the recipe calls for anytime you're making bread machine bread. So I don't have powdered buttermilk, so we're just using regular powdered milk in here. One cup quick cooking oats, and then I need some boiling water. Hagen, can you grab a kettle? So we've got one cup of quick cooking oats. Four cups of flour. We're gonna mill up some flour. All right, I mistakenly started to add my flour after I told y'all, hey, you gotta add your ingredients in the order that the recipe calls for. It's really important that you do that. So all my wet ingredients should be underneath of the flour. I added one cup of flour in there. Gonna kind of push these underneath into there. Don't do what I did. Okay, girls, okay. make sure you start your... So that was a third cup of steel cut oats that was soaked in hot water until it became cool. We've already done one cup of all purpose flour in there. So now we're gonna add one and a half cups of that flour that we just milled that you saw. All right, so all of our wet ingredients are down in the bottom. We're gonna do one tablespoon of yeast on top. And then halfway through the process, we are going to add some chocolate chips. Can I put in the chocolate chips? Of course. Yay, I love chocolate chips. One chip. tablespoon of yeast that's stuck in there. Okay, now we're gonna pop this into our bread machine. This is my Zojirishi bread machine. We don't have the greatest lighting in the room where I have this off in my side pantry. So we're gonna click that. We're gonna select the course. So we've got wheat, dough, basic. Start, there we go. So this is gonna preheat all the ingredients and start mixing them up. Okay, then amidst all of our bacon stuff here, we're gonna add, we're gonna get our uh, other ingredients that we wanna add to this particular recipe. Um, so I'm gonna do about... Walnuts. Hmm? Walnuts. Walnuts. About half a cup of walnuts. No, stop it. Okay. Here. All right, pour the bag into the bowl. The whole one? Yep, the whole bag. You might even need to do more than that. That's a baby chocolate chip. Yep, we're using the little mini emergency stash of chocolate can I have chips. One? Yep, one. you can have a couple. So we got walnuts and chocolate chips, and after our uh, bread has mixed for a little bit, we're going to add those in. It beeps at us. It goes beep, 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 beep. Not like that, but it beeps quite a few times to let us know that we can add our additional ingredients. So we're gonna use the rest of this banana puree to make some muffins. All right, so this isn't gonna be like a typical dough. Usually your banana bread dough is gonna be sticky, wet. Uh, go ahead and scrape down the sides. You don't have to scrape down your sides. What happens if you don't scrape down your sides halfway through is you get some dry ingredients. Uh, on the outside of your loaf of bread, which isn't, you know, a huge deal, but it does help to kind of scrape all the ingredients down into your bread. All right, my Zojirishi now says add, and that is to add the ingredients. 
Ooh, satisfying sound. Let's see if it actually mixes it up. It's so fun watching the bread machine do all the work. gets it all mixed in there for us. So we just throw in the ingredients and walk away. We can go to the grocery store. We can go read a book. We can go do homeschool. And this is doing all the work for us. Yep, we're gonna make some muffins with the leftover mashed bananas. We're gonna throw those in the oven. We're gonna make those up real quick. All right, we're gonna make Hagen's recipe for triple chocolate banana bread. So we're gonna do this plain Greek yogurt, but we're gonna go ahead and make strawberry banana bread. So we need a quarter cup of that. Might be a little extra. Half a cup. Okay, Torsten, do you wanna eat this? The rest of that? Half a cup of All right, mom's just gonna pretend like I know this. One, yes. two, three, four, that's half a cup. All right. Uh, two large eggs. You wanna crack them right there? Do you wanna crack one? No. One. I don't trust myself Why? What happened? Because one time I was cracking eggs and one it exploded. One just ex yeah. this one just exploded too. Well, no, it exploded a shell. On the I keep if getting they, shells. If they get if they explode, then they're extra. old. All right. Next up. One teaspoon vanilla extract. All right. Open that up and pour a teaspoon in. I don't measure wet ingredients because they get the measuring spoons dirty. All right, maybe a little extra if you're sassy. And what else? Uh, two cups of all-purpose flour. Whisk together the white ingredients you're putting them in. Just paint for the dry. Oh shoot, I just got oil all over my clean vest. Oh, whisk that up. All right, once we got all the wet ingredients mixed, we're doing two cups of this and what else? Two cups of that. You know the deal with the cocoa powder. We gotta sip it. All right, and what? We're just gonna dump some in there. So I just go like this and dump. Whoa! Woo! Cups. Yep. They're up in the cabinet with the baking supplies right here. And how fitting we've got fall, y'all. Paper cups. Okay, so we forgot the sugar. Uh, rookie mistake on my part. I got five kids, and as you can hear in the background, there's a lot going on. And between homeschool and trying to feed people, I do things like forget stuff. So the chocolate chips have sugar in it. There you go, kids. Some no sugar muffins. We'll put some sugar on top. Let's do, let's sprinkle the top with some. 
Yeah, we're out of we're out of granulated sugar, so we're just gonna sprinkle some, sprinkle some of this. I don't know how we forgot the most important ingredient. I thought the most important ingredient was bananas help, help. and chocolate and more chocolate. Please, I think I need to start this thing over here. Or maybe we'll just leave it and see what happens. Don't forget the sugar in your recipes. There you go. Look, we're not perfect here, but all right. These are the sugar-free <laughs> triple chocolate. That's just double chocolate. We didn't add triple chocolate in it, but this is just a sugar-free version of muffins. So the kids, you know, they're not they're not too picky. So they're just not loaded down with sugar. This one's got a couple extra muffin cups in it. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna load them up with butter though because butter's amazing. Yes. And we'll have a chocolate muffin with butter. It's gonna be delicious. A little bit of sugar sprinkled on top. All right, yeah. we're getting ready to head out to go to the bike shop and then go mountain biking. So quick leftover meal. Um, we had muffins too. We had these muffins that we just baked. So the kids are going to have a little bit of tri-colored pasta with some leftover tomato sauce from yesterday with meat in it. And served on paper plates because we're getting ready to rush out the door. And I don't want to deal with red pasta sauce washing dishes right now. So uh, I get the tri-colored rotini from Azure Standard and then the pasta sauce came from Costco. It's the Classico organic kind. And then we just uh, cooked up some meat and seasoned the meat and this is what we're gonna eat on. And then we have some extra pasta and extra sauce. So after mountain biking, we'll have some more. We'll be good. So I got 500 kids to feed. This is my butter melting back here on low heat. I'm gonna grind up some fresh soft white wheat berries to make a root. <laughs> couple of tablespoons of that in here with our butter make a roux because we're gonna make a cheese sauce cuz I'm making macaroni cheese and peas but we're also uh, gonna add tuna fish to it and so we're gonna have macaroni cheese peas tuna fish uh, type meal here so something interesting that I've decided to make mix in I'm just mixing in the flour with the butter to make the roux and then we'll add some cheese and some cream to that and some pepper some mustard powder if i can find it if i can't oh well we're gonna do a little bit of garlic a little bit of onion Okay, we're gonna add some cream into this, some heavy whipping cream because that's what I got. And then we're gonna add some cheese into it. I might do some milk in here too. Just let that cook for a few minutes and we'll throw some cheese in there. about just blocking it up okay so oh my god oh my gosh look what just happened to my cheese grater y'all that's crazy that's crazy just broke my dang cheese grater saw what happened here first so i buy this cheese in bulk from azure standard and five pound logs and then i cut it up and uh vacuum seal it y'all see i've been buying some shredded cheese from the grocery store. It's because this takes time and energy and I'm trying to paint my porch. Uh, but this is good. So we're gonna use this white cheddar right here. And then I gotta get right back out there and keep painting my porch. If you're wondering why I'm wearing this old raggedy sweatshirt with paint stains on it, it's cause that's what I've been doing the last day, couple days, is paint my porch. Okay. So we're also gonna cube up some cheese for this roux. Just start with that right there, see how that tastes. You know, you make a roux to stretch your cheese. We're gonna need a lot more than that. But to get it going. I'm gonna show you the finished product. So I don't have measurements. I just make a roux, throw some cheese in it. I've got my other stuff cooking over here. 
That's going to take a little while to thicken up. Mmm, tastes really good though. All right, we're also going to add a little bit of milk to our cheese sauce just because I added that heavy whipping cream. That's pretty, it's pretty heavy, but I don't want to water it down. I want it to be real creamy. Creamy and delicious. We're going to add a little bit of salt to this after we give it a good stir and taste. The cheese hasn't quite melted into it yet, especially because I just added that cold milk. All right, we're just adding a little bit of mustard to this sauce as well. It makes for a nice little flavor. Okay, here we go. We've got our cheese sauce. And we're gonna pour that in over top of all of this mess. Have that burner. We're just gonna get this all mixed up in here. Just in time. Oh, that's like that was dropping food everywhere. Good stuff right there. I also just tossed a little bit of smoked paprika in there just to give it a little bit more flavor. Add whatever you like. You can also pop this in the oven, put some more cheese on top, just really cheese it up. Here we go, I'm gonna feed my five hungry kids. So this morning we made oatmeal and Hagen did a sugar experiment where she added tablespoons of sugar to a quarter cup of water for science. So we added that to our oatmeal, but we also added these sun dried mixed berries from Sunmade. So that's what you see in there. We also added some cinnamon and we did organic chia seeds, hemp hearts, and we're gonna throw some brown sugar on top as well as some butter. I got butter right here, some salted butter. We're gonna serve that up to the kids. So we've got chia seeds, whole hemp seeds, oatmeal, and a bunch of mixed berries. We also use Redmond's Real Salt in there and it makes a really tasty oatmeal.